Yo, Elliot, I had a question about fasting and working out. I'm doing CrossFit four or five times a week. I'm part of the Exodus men group. For two days a week, it's recommended that we fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. That's right. I'm struggling with this routine in that my training routine and fasting is challenging. I train on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. On Wednesday, which is a fasting day, I struggle with sleep and staying awake. Generally, my sleep has gotten worse since following this routine. Also, energy for training is off since introducing fasting to my week. Do you have any idea on how I can schedule my training around the fasting for optimal results and any tips on improved sleep on fasting days? I heard somewhere that after fasting, it's good to have a meal and allow the body time to be in an optimal state for training. Appreciate your wisdom on this. Loving the journey. So I'll tell you what I do because I'm with you on this journey. We're doing Exodus 90, which is a 90 day form of austerity that leads up and through Lent into Easter. We started uh, the second week of January. So it's 90 days. And one of the things we do, which is actually a, the early church practiced this as a lifestyle, right? We've gotten so far away from fasting, especially in our consumption culture, that any thought of skipping meals freaks people out. But in the early church, they always, they fasted. I'd say up until probably the early 1900s, 20th century, particularly Catholics, but I know Orthodox did it. And I'm not sure about Protestants. They make up their own rules. But Wednesdays and Fridays were fasting days. I train as well as you. I'll share my experience and I'll share what I do. Then I'll also share what I know about what you're struggling with. I trained yesterday, which is Wednesday. I can garner up enough energy to, tr to, to fast, train, but then I eat. And so I don't fast overnight. I'm not sure if you are either. I don't know what you're doing, but it's, a, it's OMAD essentially. That's right, Lucas. Uh, it's OMAD essentially. Essentially it's, and this is, this is based on the faith. One full meal, two small meals, that or two small snacks that don't equal a meal, right? He said, you're doing 36 hour fast. You don't need to do 36 hour fast. And I don't encourage you to do 36 hour fast. You don't need to do 36 hour fast. You could do 36 hour fast if you want to. And 36 hour fasts are great if that's where you're at and that's what you're trying to achieve and you got a reason why. But if you're spiritual fasting and you're just, you're doing it as a devotion, I don't want us to forget that too. Exodus is a, is a Catholic program that those two days of fasting are a devotion. What is it? What is a devotion? In other words, we're, we're, it's a penance. It's a mortification. It's a way to say, I am not trapped by this world. I am not seduced by the trappings of this world. I can suffer a little bit for my Lord as he suffered for me. That's really what it is. Suffer a little bit. We, we suck at suffering in our society for a number of reasons. Number one, because suffering is, is painful. But number two, because we're so egotistical. Well, I don't want to suffer because I got to go to school, because I got to go to work, because I got to work out, because I don't think well. Because, and you know what? All that is effeminate, egotistical BS. If your workout has to suffer a little bit, as a form of right praise and worship, a form of penance, then just let it suffer. Just let it suffer, right? Well, that's not you. You don't need to do that. You don't need, I don't, the, the program doesn't require 36 hour fast. And if you're crossfitting four or five days a week, it probably isn't the best bet. It's better for me to fast as I just basically am doing bodybuilding. I just, I'm bodybuilding and like, basically that's what I'm doing. I'm not, CrossFit is crazy. You need glycogen for CrossFit. You need energy for CrossFit. You guys are like run a mile and do a hundred squats and 75 pull-ups and 50 push-ups. And you can't do that fasted. I mean, you can, but you'll quickly break down. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do CrossFit and fasting 36 hours twice a week. Right. One, something will have to give. I fast on Wednesdays and I, and I, I could do more, 
but I don't, I find that I don't need to. If I work out on Wednesdays, I try my best to push it out into the evening. And then at the end of my workout, or as my workout starts to, I start to feel like I'm fading, I'll have a protein shake or a, you know, a, a workout drink. And then I'll have my meal right afterwards. So even if I, even if I'm starting to, to falter during the middle of my workout, I'll have a living fuel shake, right? I have a, there's one called workout fuel or something like that. I forget, I forget what it's called. That's lawful. That's lawful uh, by the magisterium in the church. And it's lawful by the, for the Exodus 90 program. In fact, if it's one meal and two small meals, I could have a pre-workout shake. I could have a, a meal within my workout if I, or shake within my workout if I wanted to, right? Or some fruit, right? Have a banana and then eat a big meal afterwards. That's what I would do if I were you. Just, you're, 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 you're not failing. Here's another thing too that I want you to notice because I noticed it in myself and, and I noticed it's one of the things that men struggle with. And it's funny how Brianna Shaw talks about this in one of his books. Ignatius, uh, how we out of ego impose unnecessary austerities on ourselves. And he tells a story about fasting in the book. Um, he said, I think it's Brian Ashav, either that or the Desert Fathers, one of the books I've recommended. There's a, a bishop comes to two monks and, uh, and one monk says, um, I eat every other day. Right. And so he's kind of like explaining to him what his fasting rule is. He says, I eat every other day. And the uh, and the bishop was like, OK, well, that's good. And then the other one says, I eat but once a day. And he says, ah, that's better. And the reason why he, he asserted that it was better, the monk that was eating once a day as opposed to the monk that was eating twice a day was better, he says, because with too much austerity comes pride. Too much austerity come pride. So you don't need to fast 36 hours, but your ego likes it. And demons work through the ego too. So the demons whispering in your ear, why don't you do a 36 hour fast, buddy? 16 hour fast, 18 hour fast. A real man doesn't fast like that. You got to go to sleep. You got you to gotta do a 36 hour fast. And that's not true, <laughs> right? He also goes on to say that we like to impose austerities upon ourselves that are, first of all, out of all proportion to, our, to, to, to what we need. Also, we do it while ignoring smaller, what we think smaller things need to be handled. So it'll be like, you know, you're living in a state of sin because you're fornicating, you're living with your, you know, you have a live-in girlfriend, you're cohabitating. Uh, but yet you're going to perform penance by fasting for 36 hours. He's like, that's, that's dumb. He says, give up the fasting and fix your sin. Right. I've done that before too. You know, I, when I first started fasting, I was still smoking weed every day. And I was like, I'm doing such a great pious thing by fasting. But it's like, bro, why don't you just stop smoking weed? <laughs> ego. We, we get tricked. So you recognize, he says, yes, I recognize that ego. Don't fast for 36 hours unless, unless that's what you're up to. And then that's what you're doing. That's what you want to do. But if you're doing Exodus 90, you don't need to do that. I say have a protein shake or a small meal before your workout, maybe to get you through the workout, have something in between, right? And then have a big meal afterwards and then you're done. Especially if you're fasting in the evening times and it sounds like you are. So Wednesday PM, all right, you're struggling with fasting. Anyway. Also trying to get lean. I'll tell you what, Ben, since starting Exodus 90 and just doing what I told you, I'm not doing any more than what I just told you. I've dropped 10 pounds. I was getting bloated there for a while. And that's why I know I needed to do Exodus 90 because I was like, I need a reason to fast. And I was, it just wasn't happening for me. And you know what I found? Of course, doing 36, 48, 72 hours, is powerful. There's no question about it. But I'm finding that it's unnecessary. In, 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 other, in other words, for me, I did it back when I did it because I was healing from various things. And sometimes like, you know, Rob is talking about Moses fasting for 40 days and Jesus fasting for 40 days. There are times when that needs to happen in your life. I heard, I watched, I listened to an audio book about fasting and why Jesus 
And, you know, they fasted. Why 40 days? And I don't know if this is true, but this is what the guy was saying in the book. He says, because that is the amount of time that it, from, from birth to death of a fly. And he says he uses the symbol, the symbolism as sins are like flies. The book Screw Tape Letters talks about that. Oh, it's something else, Andrew. Yeah. Um, but so 40 days is the lifespan of a fly. And flies, you know, flies are gross. You know, you're in hell if there's a lot of flies around, right? <laughs> so he says, all our sins are like flies buzzing around us. You know, they're annoying and stuff. He says, it takes 40 days for them all to die. Uh, you know, I don't know, but it sounded pretty cool to me. But anyway, don't let your ego get the best of you. Do the bare minimum. I know that goes against our rah, rah, go get them, grind it till you die lifestyle in, in America, right? But that's a lie. That's a lie. Sometimes it is more virtuous to do the bare minimum because pride can creep in. I know I've done it, right? I'm going to do something, but I'm going to do extra, right? Like, for example, you know, it's good enough to pray one rosary a day, but I got to do three. And I am still doing three. I've been doing three rosaries. I've been doing three rosaries since the beginning of the year, right? But I am an extremist and it's unnecessary, right? And you know, one of the things that, why the devil tempts us with pride, why the devil tempts us with pride is because pride gets you to be puffed up and reliant on your own will. And when you inevitably fail, you then you have to beat yourself up, right? I failed. So the pride is designed for the fall. <laughs> That's the whole point of pride. The whole point of pride is to puff up so that, that all you need is a tiny little needle to go, boom, oh, now my life is terrible. I can't do anything. I never stick to anything I was going to say I'm going to do. I have no discipline. I'm a terrible man. But the problem was, no, bro, you were trying to be too tough. You're trying to do too much. Why didn't you just do the bare minimum? Do what you got to do. So, all right, that's helpful to you. You got it, bro. I guess I, I said enough on that. <laughs> Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.